The Ides of March are upon us, but I bring you not blades, I bring you metal. Welcome metalheads, I'm the host of Heavy Metal Philosophy and writer for Metal Digest, John Barbus. Make sure you stick around to the end of the episode for this week's Album Art of the Week. The weekend means new metal albums and it was stacked once again. Before I bring you my top five, let's shout out the big releases from this week. Night Versus has released part two of Every Sound Has a Color in the Valley of Night, and this one has a feature from Brandon Boyd of Incubus that I really dig. Progressive metal, I'm always going to dig this, check it out. And the writers of pretty much THE internet guitar song. Why do people want to play so fast? Why do people want to risk injuries into in their body, on their hands, to play so fast? Why? I don't get it. Dragon Force has a new record called Warp Speed Warriors. And speaking of killer guitar music, Necrophobic has a new album called In the Twilight Gray. Killer lead guitar on this one, and the music is kind of more my speed. And then speaking of Black and Death, there's a new record from Viltimus called Epic. If you don't know, this is the super group that David Vincent put together, and it's Black and Death. But on this one, David Vincent has a real like trad metal sort of delivery to his vocals, which makes for a very unique sounding experience. And lastly, before we jump into my top five for the week, there's a new record from Aborted called Vault of Horrors. In the last three records I just shouted out, I got the privilege of getting early. Y'all know what that means. My written reviews are already published in Metal Digest. If you read my review of this one, you will see that this is the one that I praised the most this week. This aborted record is brutal and technical and groovy. And just, yes. Coming in at number five, Udon. Did I pronounce that correctly? I'm not sure. Text on the screen just in case with their self-titled debut. And this comes from Thomas Erickson, who is the front person for the black metal legends Mork. He felt like Mork was getting kind of complex as they matured and grew. And he wanted to make something that was more, in his words, primal. So here we have a bit more of a raw production on this black metal. But I can hear, even underneath that raw production, some really nuanced and excellent musicianship. Particularly, I like the counter melodies that the bass are playing underneath the melodies of the guitar. So you might have stripped down the production, but I can hear that seasoned musicianship despite that production. And that's why I like this one. Check it out. Coming in at number four, speaking of black metal with names that I can't pronounce, this is Poronik with V Porogu. Uh, text on the screen, and as always, every band's band camp will be in the description. Just click the link. That way, all of these albums are easy to find despite my terrible Southern American pronunciation. This is black metal out of Poland, but think pre Satanist era behemoth. Lots of death growls in this one all those great evil black metal guitar riffs i had a good time listening to this one check it out coming in at number three speaking of a good time leather lung graveside sin it's been a long time since i picked stoner metal on this show because as much as i like stoner metal it can really sound same same a lot so i don't pick it that often because most of it doesn't stand out this stands out it's heavy and it's got an attitude. I wrote in my written review for Metal Digest that this might be the stoner metal record that breaks the world record for the amount of times that they say the word fuck. And I'm not praising it merely because of my juvenile love of curse words. I'm praising it because this is stoner metal with attitude. There won't be any tales of whimsical wizards riding rainbow magic on practical mushroom trips. These guys, it sounds like they took a shot of whiskey and you can come to our raging party, but if you act up, we're gonna whip your ass. Coming in at number two, Weston Superman, see you tomorrow, baby. This is a weird one. It's like technical, progressive, math 
poor noise. I, I don't know. But it's just, there will be leads that are just explosions of math core craziness. But then there's like melodic parts, like almost alternative, and then just straight genty heaviness with brutal vocals and wild arrangements. Yeah, this one's crazy and I love it. Check it out. And hey, before we do number one, I just want to say a couple things to you. If you love metal the way that I love metal, then you're in the right place. You should join the heavy metal philosophy community. That's all we do here. Every weekend, we break down the best new metal albums. Every Tuesday is the podcast. And if you want to get some cool metal jewelry, go to gothic.com. Links in the description. Put in my code METAL25. Get 25% off. Thank you so much. Now let's do number one. Coming in at number one. Ozor, the Vermilion Haze. This is like a sludgy doom metal coming out of California. I really enjoyed this one because it's heavy, but it's kind of like, this will fit any occasion. You can listen to this one in the car with your friends, and they'll be like, oh, you listen to some heavy stuff, but they're not, uh, la, la, death, destruction, zombies, none of that. It's a little bit alternative. It really reminds me of the 90s, not because of sound, because it still sounds modern, but the way that they arrange it and the fact that the band has an actual rhythm section with a pulse so even the soft parts have movement to it you know i just love sludge metal i'm always going to be into that these guys do it super well that's why it's number one and we still got dealer's choice and the album R of the week so don't go anywhere for dealer's choice i'm picking per weiberg with the serpents here you might think that that name sounds familiar, that's because he used to play keys for Opeth, and now here he is with a solo record, it's not metal, so that's why it's going in dealer's choice, but it is some nice rock and roll, and it's got sort of like this beatnik poetry sort of vibe to the vocals. I'm into that. Maybe you need a little palate cleanser, check out Pear Wyburn. My favorite album art this week comes from Cult Icon which is a brilliant band name, and it's Black Iron Prison, but check this out. Looks like some space nuns whispering some sort of plot into Death's ears. And then there's the triangle sigil above his head. Makes me wonder, what are they trying to get at here? This makes me curious, and it's cool looking. I love the color scheme and the art style. Maybe want to listen to the record. You know that's going to get in my album art of the week. If you can make me want to listen to the record just by looking at the cover, old school style. And speaking of old school style, your boy has a podcast. And if you want to catch a great episode of the podcast, just click right here. But most importantly, read philosophy, listen to metal. I love you. 